Welcome back to Switzer on Australia's Business Channel. No other CEO in this country, apart from his number one rival, has been embroiled in both an economic and political controversy as John Borghetti, the CEO of Virgin Australia. At the moment, Qantas and his airline are locked in a dogfight which is producing losses for both companies. So what is the end play and could it end up being a death spiral for both airlines? And what should the government do to help the industry generally? To answer this question, John Borghetti joins me in the studio. John, how are you going? Hi, Peter. Now, I've known you a long time. You don't usually like getting involved in political dogfights, but that's what it's become. It's not just a battle between you and Qantas. It's also the government's in there. Labor, in a sense, is, is backing probably Qantas at the moment, from what I can see. Um, and the government seems to be playing the kind of line that you'd want. Don't, don't uh, uh, support their debt and just change the Qantas Sale Act. What's the position of, of you versus Qantas. Is this all being caused because you're trying to take market share off Qantas? Well, look, l let me firstly commentate from a point of view of uh, someone who's been in the industry for 40 years rather than the CEO of Virgin. And yeah. I suppose my view on, on aviation in general is that 20 years ago we embarked on this liberalisation attitude of bringing in competition and benefiting the consumer with cheaper prices and better services and I think it's worked very well mm. when you look at the uh, last 10 years in particular but even more so in the last three years where we brought competition in. So once you've gone down that path I think to go back the other way is a retrograde st step. Mm. So of course people talk about debt guarantees and Qantas sale acts and you know all those sorts of things and and we can go back to those and discuss yeah. them one at a time but but fundamentally, the biggest thing that's impacting aviation today, right now, is the carbon tax. And so I'm very pleased that the government is taking its time to consider all the facts because this is a big decision. Now, I'll give you an example when I say the carbon tax. Um, since its introduction till the 31st of December last year, we've paid almost $80 million. Now, that's $80 million straight out of the bottom line. Mm. If you believe, and, and obviously Qantas is more than double our size, so multiply that by two domestically, you're talking about somewhere between 250 to $300 million of money straight off aviation's bottom line in the last 18 months. That's a significant amount of profit because you know that it hasn't been uh, collected. I mean, obviously, it hasn't been possible in the current environment. So I think that's a big issue. So that's, that's been, been a big cost impost on you? For the industry, okay. which obviously we feel... Okay. Now, but it seems to me that a critical issue in this battle between you and, and Joyce, or the Virgin Australia and Qantas, is the fact that uh, Joyce and Qantas have drawn a line in the sand, 65%. Explain what that 65% to normal people who read it all the time, what does 65% mean? Well, um, it's a very good question. I'm not sure that there is uh, another company in another industry that has ever said we're going to put uh, a line in the sand of X percent and no matter what we will hold it, irrespective of the financial outcome. Uh, but then aviation is a little bit strange, so uh, maybe that's what it is. But effectively, uh, the, the strategy as we understand it is that, uh, and as that's been articulated by Qantas, is that they will not give up 65% market share yeah. of the seats, not of the revenue, but of the seats on the Australian domestic. Yeah. So consequently, for every seat that we put in the market, uh, they have to put a minimum of two to keep that percentage, irrespective of whether they're filled or not. Yeah. Did you expect this to be the, the, the rules of the game when you started chasing market share, being a, a smaller player? Well, that's the interesting thing. We haven't been chasing market share. We have never gone out and said, you know, we want X amount of market share of the Australian market. What we have said is uh, we need a different revenue mix within our share yeah. because it was all low yield and we need some low yield fare, high yield fares to, to make the mix work. So for us, you know, whether we have you know, 30% or 35% or 33%, it really doesn't matter. It's the mix. It's what makes you the money at the end of the day. Yeah. However, you are a bit hostage to the la largest player, as any uh, player in any market is. The largest pl player usually dictates uh, the events of the industry in so many ways because it has the biggest resources. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in essence, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're saying, well, look, uh, we've got our network footprint, we've got our frequency, uh, but pricing is impacted because there is overcapacity, obviously uh, significant. Yeah, but you wanted, you actually said you wanted at least 20% of the corporate business, didn't you? Where are you now on that? Oh, we're in the mid-20s. You're in the mid-20s. So you're hurting him, 
hurting Qantas by getting into that 25% area? Well, I'd area. like to put that a different way. Yeah. Uh, I think we're, we're bringing competition and cheaper fares and yeah. better service. Yeah. Uh, service and competition and, and lower fares that hadn't existed until the day that ANSET fell over, basically. Mm. I mean, there's been a decade, or there was a decade, where the business market was effectively held hostage by Qantas. But it goes one step further. And this is why I'm amused by some of this uh, rhetoric that's going around in, in Canberra and other places that says, you know, without Qantas, uh, Australian aviation, you know, will be in deep trouble because there'll be no one there to service the regional markets of mm. Australia and so on. Well, you know, we've been growing in regional Australia. We bought Sky West and we're trying to enter other markets. But the irony of all of this is that there are some routes in regional Australia they were actually forbidden from competing because they're licensed and exclusively to Qantas, like the Roma route, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, an incredibly important route. The airfares are incredibly high. I mean, in fact, someone uh, quoted me a fare the other day. You could fly cheaper from Brisbane to Perth uh, on Virgin return than you can Brisbane to Roma return mm -hmm. on Qantas. So you say, well, why don't you liberalise that? kind of market and allow us to enter the regional. So, so I think there's a lot of emotion that's, that's coming to the debate which is just colouring the whole thing. If, if, for example, there wasn't um, uh, an ACCC and you and Alan got together over lunch and said, well, look, come on, let's at least agree that we'll never cut the price below this. And, of course, that's what the ACCC would prevent you from doing. You know, both you know, that the, the prices that the, your competition is resulting in doesn't help your bottom line. So you've got, to, you know, you've got to crane your neck before reporting season and say, we've made a loss. You prefer not to do that. Is there any way that this will stop in the, in the next, say, six months or a year? Or do you think you're going to be well, look, faced with losses because of this market share no, I battle? I think uh, there's a couple of points there. First of all, I am glad the ACCC is there because it is benefiting the consumers by having it there. Not having it there would not be a good result. Mm. But the second thing is, I think eventually when, uh, you know, both carriers are in this position, uh, common sense must prevail in terms of capacity, therefore price. And hopefully we'll get to a point, which is really what it's all about, of competing on not just price, but product and service. Mm -hmm. Because now we are at a point where we can't compete on product and service. And there is no doubt in my mind that uh, we are in, good, in a good place. Mm -hmm. So we have to basically wash, off, wash out this excess capacity. I mean, I don't understand the logic of someone coming on air and saying, look, uh, we're losing money. We're losing money because it's, uh, there's overcapacity. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to add another 4% capacity. Is this what Alan Joyce said? Well, yeah. that's uh, the report. At the same that time, the he's, he's so cutting he's, jobs so he, to, to try and reduce his costs. Is that going to work? Well, I'm sure he knows best, and, yeah. and this board will have advised him. Uh, it's certainly not the way that we uh, would operate in our business. Um, you know, we don't believe in, in. In fact, we've created jobs. If you look at the last three and a half years, We've employed three and a half thousand people more than we had. I mean, that's almost a thousand a year. But John, you know that the kind of implication out there is that you're backed by these foreign owners, oh, yes, and they've got in. deep pockets, and they're going to just you know, keep on bankrolling you and you and losses until Qantas actually has to come away from that 65% line. I guess. Well, there are two. Is that types true? Of, no, it's not true. And there are two types of people that say that. Uh, the people that know nothing about aviation and get caught up in all this rhetoric and emotional stuff that is being thrown around in Canberra as well as by um, the opposition, etc., uh, our opposition, etc. Um, and, uh, and secondly, are the people that are deliberately distorting the facts to suit their own end. Uh, the fact is, if we were backed by three foreign governments, which clearly we're not because there's public listed companies that operate there and we're a publicly listed company, mm -hmm. then our credit rating would be significantly better than where it is. In fact, you know what? It'd be significantly better than Qantas mm. um, because allegedly there'd be three governments, but it's not. It's about three or four notches below Qantas. So if the logic is true that Qantas says, look, if I get a government guarantee, I can access cheaper debt or improve my rating or stop it from going down, then surely our rating would be outstripping theirs, but it's not. Why? Because the markets know the truth and they know that we are not backed by uh, foreign governments. We, are, we have people that have invested in our business. And by the way, there is nothing wrong with foreign capital coming into an Australian company, allowing it to grow, to bring competition and to employ more Australians. In the end, 80% of our business is domestic. 
it is impossible for us to employ baggage handlers checking people in China or in Bangkok or in somewhere else. You know, this is good for Australia. It is not bad for Australia. But John, if, for example, you could service your planes in New Zealand because the, the good quality engineers over there and the currency advantage, would you consider that to well, make to make the, the losses go away? Look, this is a global. Well, we do actually do some engineering in New Zealand as well as in Singapore, and of course we've got a rather large operation in Brisbane and Melbourne that we own as well. But but we you know we forget that we're now in a world of globalisation. You know, people no longer live in a local village. They live in a global village. People much younger than you and I, in their 20s and 30s and 40s, uh, certainly much younger than me, uh, uh, you know... You didn't have to go to the 40s then. You no, I didn't have to. Just, let's leave it at 20s and 30s. Okay. You know, they buy from a global village. They buy brands that suits them. They buy, they buy uh, brands that give them what they want in service or price or quality. Mm -hmm. So this whole notion about you know, uh, Australia has to stay a village and we must have a national carrier because God forbid if that national carrier disappears, we're in trouble. Well, you know what? Have a look at history. History tells you that in aviation, as soon as one airline falls over, and by the way, Qantas is nowhere near falling over. They're an incredibly strong company. Mm. Uh, there'll be two ready to take its place, uh, as it's been proven over time. Do, but where is this going to end, John? Do you think in the end, Alan Joyce will have to move away from the 65% line because otherwise, this capacity thing, every time you try to increase capacity, mm -hmm. he's going to at least nearly double it. Are you, are you going to back off in the end? Well, I think the only thing I'd say to that is we have a strategy which is not about market share. Mm -hmm. We have a strategy which is about repositioning the business, and that's exactly what we've been doing, and we're sticking to that strategy. What Qantas does with their 65 or 68 or 62, whatever they want to pick, is completely up to them. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not our... Our view of business. Do you feel as though Labor is being unfair to you in, in, in basically backing Qantas and saying, you know, give them the AAA debt um, support, which you guys, you wouldn't get. There's no way. If they give it to Qantas, you're not going to get it. Do you think that's an unfair treatment to your, Look, your company? Look, I've got to say, I have been absolutely, um, I've been incredulous over some of the comments that have come from that side of mm. politics lately. I just find it bizarre, comments like the flying camel, I think it was, and the flying koala. Yeah, it, it, um, it, was, it was animalist, wasn't it? I, I, I thought the animal uh, liberationists would have been anymore. out there. Yeah, I was busy. Uh, look, I think it's, it's, it's really, it's turning the clock back 20 years. And is that what we really want? Remember what airlines were when they were backed by government. They were bureaucratic, they were slow, they provided not so good service, but what we do know is they provided very high fares because they became lazy. And is that what we want to go back to? Because if that's what we want to go back to, then I suppose some of those comments are fair. Um, is there going to be a time when prices are going to start rising because the pair of you just realised this is just crazy? Look, I think that uh, obviously where we are is unsustainable. I mean, no one can keep this up for the next 10 years, right? Uh, and, uh, but I think that at some point, um, rationality will come into the market, demand will catch up with supply, and you'll get a new norm. That, by the way, doesn't mean that airfares necessarily have to go up uh, at the bottom end of the market, you know, that's always a very competitive situation. Uh, look, I think it's, it's just an industry dynamic that will work itself through. I read on the weekend there's a thing called the S-curve effect. Were you aware of this? <laughs> no, the first time I heard it, I thought they were talking about the S-bend, and I'm thinking, what's that got to do with aviation? But yeah. then I read up the McKinsey study. I, I look, uh, it is a theory that, that existed some 15, 20 years ago, yeah. and, uh, and if you read the, the paper that was written on it, it actually says, look, it doesn't work in a market where there are low-cost carriers as well as full-service carriers because the dynamics are different. And the idea is, and is this, you can't go over 75% because you couldn't afford to do this stuff, but you also can't afford to go below uh, 65, well, uh, about no, 60 or something. About 60. Yeah. But, and, you know, that would have been right perhaps in the days of ANSET and TIA or mm. ANSET and uh, Australian Airlines, I should say. Uh, where there were no low-cost carriers, you know, there were two, two carriers, a, a real duopoly if there ever there was one, and a regulated one, may I add. Um, but it certainly isn't applicable today in today's... Did you ring up 
um, the, the Prime Minister when you thought that they were going to give a Triple A uh, support to, to Qantas? Not if, I was you, I, I, if I was you, I would have, but did you? I'm not presumptuous enough to think that I can just pick up the phone and ring yeah. the Prime Minister. Yeah. I think the Prime Ministers uh, and, and the party uh, and the government, for that matter, I think has done a good job weighing all this up. Yeah. Now, ultimately, they'll make a decision, and whatever it is, we'll have to live by it. You haven't given Clive Palmer a call? Because he's going he's to be quite influential in this whole story as well. Oh, I think you have to allow people time to, to think it through and, and come up with the answer. I've got faith that ultimately um, reason, you know, logic and reason will prevail. And I think that in any industry, I mean, in the TV industry, if there was some kind of support for, I don't know, Channel 2 or something or Channel 7 and not for Channel 9, you'd have the same outcry or you'd have the same situation. So yeah. it's just logical. Tell me this, John. Um, do, you, do you... I'm sure this was the case. Was there ever a time when Virgin Australia was actually more Australian than Qantas on the share, on the share market? Um, look, I'll have to think about that. In terms of ownership, perhaps there was. I yeah. don't. Th but I you get annoyed know. when when you get treated. Oh, sorry, a bigger pardon. Of course, there was. Um, uh, when I started, I mean, our foreign and, ownership was. And Corrigan was probably. 30, in, Patrick's was very involved as well. Well, they time. pulled out by the time I got here. Yeah. But uh, I think local. I think foreign ownership was about 35 or something. About yeah. where Qantas is, is now. Yeah. So, so, but you get annoyed when you, you, you're perceived as not being an Australian company which could be a national carrier if, if Qantas was owned by well, foreigners. Absolutely. And, and it annoys me because we have been growing staff, we've created employment, we've brought in competition and all the things I said before and you say, what's un-Australian about that? Mm. There is nothing un-Australian about that. Mm. Um, so, uh, no, we are very proud of what we do. Well, good luck with it, John. I think the battle's going to continue for some time. Sure Thanks for joining yeah. us on the program. Thanks program. very much. After the break, we'll be talking to Michael Knox about Russia upsetting the stock market today. Thank <laughs> you.